Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And this is a new episode that I'm starting with the season winding down because I'm noticing players who are having games of which, the, you know, the BYOG, the bring your own guts. And Darnell Bronson, I've heard that you brought your own guts in the last game. You, you know, your ankle got taped up, you went right back in there and produced. Uh, but before I even go any further, who I have on right now is a sophomore quarterback who's thrown for over a thousand yards, eleven touchdowns plus. Uh, uh, you know, Darnell Bronson. Thanks so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we get into obviously the season, which you've had a great one, um, you and I were going back and forth about how quarterback was not your first position. You were a running back. Just talk yeah. to me about the evolution of you as a young football player. So basically, um. When I started playing football, I actually started off as an offensive lineman when I was five years old. And um, it was kind of an odd position because I was the fastest kid on the team. And um, but I still played offensive lineman. I had to be in the trenches, as they say now. Um, and then the year later, I played wing back. And that kind of progressed me into like the quarterback, running back situation. And then years to come, I would play running back and now I'm playing quarterback. So, so how did the quarterback aspect? How was that something that was talked about during the off season? Did you play last year a little bit? How did that position end up coming about for you? Mostly, it came about um, probably because I had the biggest arm on the team, really. So, uh, they thought I was fast. I could throw the ball accurately. So, they thought it would be a good fit for me. So that's how that really came along. Now, when they said, and, you know, the coaching staff were talking about from New Milford, when they mentioned to you that, hey, we want you to be quarterback and here are the reasons why, what was your first uh, reaction to that? To be honest, um, after transferring from Danbury, I kind of lost the love of quarterback. I didn't really want to play it. But um, when they first told me that, I – I was I wasn't really happy about it. I really didn't want to play quarterback at all. I wanted to play defense because uh, that's what I did at the ending of my last year at Danbury, and uh, that's what I was hoping to play at New Milford. So when they told me I was going to play quarterback, I wasn't really too thrilled about it. But um, I've learned to love to love the position now. So yeah, I mean it's hard not to love the position what you're doing as far as as I yeah. mentioned the numbers over you know eleven plus touchdowns over a thousand plus yards. I mean. It's one of those things, man, where it's like at first you, you know, yeah, okay, you didn't like it. But now as you're getting into week 10, I mean, I was just telling you, it's how crazy how fast the season's gone. Um, yeah, and the ball's in my hands all the time. So, you know, as an athlete, I love that. Exactly. I mean, again, like baseball. I mean, the pitcher and the catcher touch the baseball the most. Football, who touches the football the most? Quarterback. Quarterback. Sometimes center. the running backs. Depend. The running back, center, always. Exactly. And especially for you, you control what happens. You can auto. I mean, I don't know if you have the ability to be able to audible out of plays, but you can, I mean, that, that, you know, that's another part too. I want to go into uh, the growth that you've been able to have. What, like, what do you feel like has been your biggest strength and maybe something you need to still work on? I feel like my biggest strength is definitely my running aspect. Um, Cause I've always, love to run and that's always been like my first thing to do and my I would say my weakest point of my aim is probably like staying in the pocket and throwing because you know me I love running so if I get an opportunity to run I'll definitely run but um right now especially in the offense that I'm in and thanks to my old line I I'm able to throw and be comfortable with it you have to give credit to the offensive line they do the absolutely most and get zero credit exactly you know, you want to give uh give a couple of shout outs to the old line. What are their names? What positions? Of course, um, I want to give a shout out to my left tackle Liam Flynn, my uh, left guard Marco DeLima, my center, um, Danny Me Danny Reed, my right tackle uh Bill Pavlinski, and my uh right um guard Dylan Stedman. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do anything. You may have to surprise them with a pizza because we know offensive linemen love to eat. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But maybe at the end of the season when everything's done, give them a couple pies. I think they'll be extremely thrilled with that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take them out to Buffalo Wild Wings. And no, that's I'll let them eat chicken wings. 
Yeah, exactly. They'll pound a hundred wings in two minutes, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome to hear, man. Uh now as we go deeper into the position, man, you know, you mentioned how you play defense a little bit, you said, right? Yeah. Well, so do you feel like playing that, even though again, you you know, being a quarterback for such a short amount of time, do you feel like that helped you a little bit as far as trying to see what's you know pre-snap once you get to the line all right what am i looking at where are the dbs are they in a three four are they showing pressure and then you know because so much stuff is going through your mind what says you yeah um i think defensively it helped me a lot it helped me uh understand like what the quarterback's reading like uh what his reads are and it made me it made it easier for when i did play quarterback like it's easy for me to make reads and stuff so definitely defensive helped me now, with the speed aspect, too, do you also feel like that right now, again, first read, like, okay, so is it almost like, okay, if the first read's not open, are you going? Or are you just bailing out and running? Like, talk to me about that. Oh, so basically, first, if first read's not there, I'm usually looking to my second read, which is usually the check down. And if that's covered, uh, you know, I have the green light to go and run. Okay, interesting. Good to know. So I'm looking at the schedule that, you know, early part of the season, you lose game one to Cheshire, who's having a very good season, also in Class L as well, same as you guys. Uh, tough game, especially, you know, especially for you. Uh, being, again, first-time quarterback, going through a tough team, uh, was there any difficulties of maybe not so much questioning yourself, but maybe just kind of sitting back like, okay, can I do this? Am I good enough? Did you kind of have that in week one? No, not really. Um, if you watch that film, I actually mm -hmm. didn't start playing quarterback. I started at wide receiver. Okay. So, uh, but um, me and my friend Jack switched. I want to say I went to quarterback at second quarter, and then I uh, finished the game. But, um, no, I really had no doubt in my mind that I couldn't get the job done, even though we came up with with the loss. Um, I felt really confident in that position. So when they so when were you officially named the starting quarterback in what week after after first week going into um Brookfield and that's the game where you guys scored 40 plus points yes and what like what kind of game like what was that like for you I mean it was exciting especially uh you know especially all the trash Brookfield was having and then having us put 40 40 some points on them there's nothing better than that so we talk about how the first game was difficult, even though you weren't the starting quarterback in that game against Cheshire. What was your mind going like when you were told you were starting the game against Brookfield? I, I know you talked about what was being talked about by the opposing team, but for yourself, I'm sure you were focusing on, hey, I got to do my job, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, going into that week, uh, when coach told me um, I was going to be the starting quarterback, I just uh, thought about, all the things that could go wrong, really. I was more nervous than ever, but um, I was just thinking about feeding my teammates the ball, making sure I get everybody touches on the field, really. That's about it. Now, what kind of uh, routine do you have as far as before a game? So day of the game, you know, are you listening to a lot? I know, obviously, school. You're doing your schoolwork, making sure you do your job before the game. So once school is over, are you listening to music? Do you have a certain meal that you eat before a game? What's it like for Mr. Bronson over here? Uh, usually after school, I go to uh, Bagel Man and get a nice sandwich, um, nice drink. Then I go home and I kind of just try to relax my mind by playing like some video games or uh, play some music and then get ready, go back to the field and get on the bus and head to the op opponent's field or staying home. It's really now, it. Leading up to the week's game, are you drinking a lot of water? Are you stretching a lot? Are you working out or not as much? What's that like? Absolutely. Uh, we work out every day. So, um, yeah, I'm working out. Um, I stretch stretch morning and nights, and I drink a lot of Pedialyte, mostly Pedialyte and water. Really? Why uh, Pedialyte, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know. My, uh, my dad really just thinks it's a good thing to drink before uh, – football game so I don't get cramps and so I drink it and it helps me clearly I mean the two best things for cramps is Pedialyte it sounds like which I did not know that so good to know mm -hmm. I have to look into that 
And I know bananas is another thing. I know there's a player in the NVL whose whose dad buys him like a dozen to two dozen bananas per week just so he doesn't get cramped up. No, I definitely don't eat bananas. I, that's definitely not one of my favorite uh, fruits. So, but yeah, for, uh, Pedialyte and definitely water is my go-to. Hey, it's whatever's working's working, right? I mean, it's it's doing its thing. Yeah. So, you know, and you know, I appreciate you coming on, Darnell. This has been a lot of fun. Um, as the season has gone on, um, you guys right now, last time I checked, you guys are in tenth place in Class L. You got a couple yes. teams ahead of you, but you've got Barlow, which is I mean, you got two tough games as well. Barlow and New Mill uh New Fairfield. Um I know obviously you're probably going one week at a time, but has it kind of slipped a little bit like, hey, if we win this game and this team loses, I mean, are you guys doing the math or are you just focusing on the games? No, not really. We're really just focusing on the game and um we're thinking about the history of New Milford and how New Milford has never been to the playoffs. And this year we finally actually got a real shot of making the playoffs. So we're really just taking it game by game and uh, looking at every game as a playoff game. And let's talk about the history for a minute. You just mentioned how New Milford's never won a playoff game or never been to a playoff game. And never been to a playoff game. So how, how awesome would that be for you and your class and also for the seniors too? Cause you think about, something that historic you know regardless if you win or lose just to get there I feel like that would be remembered for such a long time yeah it would definitely be an amazing feeling especially for the seniors knowing that um last year was their only winning season and this year possibly having another winning season going into the playoffs so you know it's an amazing feeling knowing that we've worked so hard and we're finally at that point that we could be a contender in the L division I got to ask, do you feel any pressure as well now because you're the guy? Teams are looking, not only are you trying to make history by getting the, you know, getting the team, helping the team get to the playoff, but you also now have everybody, every defensive coordinator is focused on probably a lot of guys on the team, but their main concern is you. Yeah. How do you respond? Like, how does that make you feel? Oh, that makes me feel great. It makes me know that my, uh, my hard work is paying off, but there's no, it's not really much pressure, you know, so I don't really worry about all that pressure. I just go there and do my job, what the coaches asked me to do. No, no, I, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. A whole lot of fun being able to talk with you. Best of luck the rest of this season, and hopefully you and New Milford can make history, and hopefully New Milford has a big party for afterward because that'd be awesome. Yeah, of course. Thank you. No problem. Now, wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. Since the next time, stay safe. And remember, CT stands for Connecticut Town. I'm Roger and find them all. Enjoy their day, everybody, and be well.